Book One of the Nicomachean Ethics by Aristotle, translated by Thomas Taylor. Every one judges well of those things which he knows, and of these is a good judge. Hence, the man who is learned in anything judges well of that thing, but he in short forms a proper judgment about everything who is learned in everything. Hence, a youth is not a proper auditor of the political science for he is unskilled in the actions pertaining to life but reasonings are from and about these and besides this if he yields to his passions he will in vain and without any advantage be an auditor of ethical doctrines since the end here is not knowledge but action it makes however no difference whether a person is a youth as to his age or has juvenile manners for the defect is not from time but from living and engaging in every pursuit from passion since the knowledge of such persons in the same manner as that of intemperate is useless but a knowledge of these things will be very advantageous to those whose appetites and actions are conformable to reason and thus much by way of preface concerning the auditor of ethics how he ought to admit discussions of this kind and what we propose to consider in this treatise repeating therefore what we have said since all knowledge and deliberate choice aspires after a certain good let us show what that is which we say the political science desires and what the supreme good is of all actions by name therefore it is nearly acknowledged by most men for both the vulgar and the learned call it felicity but they conceive that to live well and to act well are the same thing as to be happy concerning felicity however what it is they are dubious and the multitude do not form the same opinion of it as the wise for some of them indeed conceive it to rank among the number of things which are clear and evident such as pleasure or wealth or honour but others assert it to be something else frequently likewise the same person forms a different opinion of it for when diseased he conceives it to be health but when poor riches and those who are conscious of their ignorance admire those who assert something grand and above their comprehension some too besides these many goods are of opinion that there is another good subsisting by itself which is the cause to all these of their being good to examine therefore all the opinions would perhaps be a vain undertaking but it will be sufficient to consider those that are most eminent or which appear to be in some respect reasonable we must not however be ignorant that arguments from principles and to principles differ from each other for plato well doubts about and investigates this whether the way is from principles or to principles as in a race from the president of the games to the goal or the contrary for we must begin from things that are known but these subsist in a twofold respect for some things are known to us but others are simply known perhaps therefore we should begin from things known to us hence it is necessary that the auditor of discussions about things beautiful and just and in short about political concerns if he is to be benefited should be adorned with worthy manners for the principle is this that the thing is so viz that certain actions are worthy and others are unworthy and if this is sufficiently apparent it is not at all requisite to know why it is so but such a one either possesses or will easily acquire ethical principles let him however who has neither of these hear what hesiod says he the first rank of excellence maintains who from himself in everything is wise and what even to the end is best foresees he too is good who yields to wise advice but he who neither from himself is wise nor to assent to others can endure is but a useless despicable man let us however return from whence we have digressed for it seems that men do not unreasonably form an opinion of good and felicity from the different kinds of lives the vulgar indeed and the most worthless part of mankind place felicity in pleasure and on this account they embrace the life which consists in the enjoyment of pleasure for there are three kinds of lives which especially take the lead the one we have just mentioned the political life and the third is the contemplative life the multitude therefore appear to be perfectly servile deliberately choosing the life of cattle 
and they support their opinion by the example of many persons in power who have preferred a voluptuous life and have lived like sardanapolis but men of elegant minds and those who are addicted to practical concerns place felicity in honour for this is nearly the end of the political life this however appears to be more superficial than the good which is the object of our investigation for honour seems to be rather in the persons that honour than in him who is honoured but we prophesy that good is something appropriate and of which it is difficult to deprive its possessor farther still it seems that men pursue honour in order that they may believe themselves to be worthy persons they seek therefore to be honoured by wise men and by those to whom they are known and with a view to virtue it is evident therefore that according to these men virtue is more excellent than honour perhaps however some one may apprehend that this virtue is rather the end of the political life but even this appears to be more imperfect than the chief good ought to be for it appears to be possible that he who possesses virtue may sleep or be unemployed through the whole of his life and besides this may be afflicted with evils and experience the greatest misfortunes but no one would proclaim a man thus living to be happy unless for the purpose of defending his position